This is an updated lesson for my ebook, 10 Classical Etudes, and the link for the ebook is in under the video there. And um, in this particular etude by Giuliani, number 22, op opus 50, um, you're working with slurs and legato phrasing, and um, just in general, like some changes in your, in your hand position over here. So dealing with legato and fingering to facilitate legato. So let's go over some ways to practice this. The first thing I'd recommend is take a look at each of the slurs, because this is essentially a slur etude. Take a look at each of the ascending or descending slurs and practice them on their own to make sure if you can do it. If you can't do the slurs on, the, on their own, how are you supposed to do it in the context of the piece? So you can just take a look, like the very first slur. Just do it repeatedly on loop. Make sure you have a nice snap and that both notes are nice and clear. Then the second slur. And then a descending slur. With descending slurs, if just lifting your finger off isn't getting you enough clarity, you can add more clarity by plucking the string with the left hand. So doing like a left hand rest stroke into the string below. That will give it more clarity. And then of course there's varying degrees of in-between. So you can let go and add a little bit of pluck if you want it to just be a little bit legato and a little bit clear at the same time. Um, and there's so many of them, right? There's so many different combinations. go through the entire piece, look at all the combination of slurs. That way your technique is in order. The second thing I'll talk about in this piece is just dealing with the one finger per fret hand position. So you're trying to keep your fingers over the frets the whole time. So if your hand's like this, you're not really over the frets, right? You have to bring that hand in, fan the fingers out in a relaxed way, and just be ready for what comes. And then there's just a couple of spots in the piece where you change positions. So it starts in second position. So there, the reason we use the third finger, and I've notated that on the score, is that the next slur is, so to go from legato from here to here requires that special fingering there. So you're in second position, you do a funny fingering for a second, and then you're in first position, and as soon as you're done that, you're back into second position. Um, and, and there's a few spots like that. One other thing that um, this piece requires is barring. So in the third line, you're going to have to do some bars in order to facilitate legato and the fingering. So starting from line three on the notation version, strings, bar, release bar. So that facilitates going legato through there. So that first bar is a D chord. So instead of playing it like that, we play it as a bar. Reach out. And that allows us to reach that note without letting go of that previous chord, which is legato, right? Here, we do a small bar so that we don't have to jump our finger over suddenly. It just allows us to play really smoothly. And then a bar here, let go, and you're back. Um, that kind of barring is, is, is not, doesn't feel natural at first maybe, but you'll get used to it. Just practice it very slowly. And it does make sense for the legato there. On the final line of the piece, the only special fingering is preparing for a bass note. So we use our third finger so that our second finger can reach down to G. And since we're already playing those notes with one and three, 
just keep playing them with one and three. And then D chord. And then an A chord with a bar. Keep it down. And grab your D chord there. If you're not used to that D chord shape, um, like you're a beginner and you're not used to it, um, it's it'll be good practice for you. As an intermediate player, you have to be able to do those kinds of fingerings. Um, just remember, if your knuckle's over here, it's going to feel like a crazy stretch. If you swing your knuckle around, it's not so bad. You can actually keep curvature in the finger at all points. Sometimes, like, I have small hands, and sometimes I'm pretty extended with my fourth, but if you really bring that knuckle in, even on tricky fingerings or tricky chord shapes, you can keep some curvature in that finger. Besides that, um, it's pretty straightforward piece, except that it's, it's kind of unrelenting because it keeps going through those 16th notes. And um, just don't forget to add in some phrasing as well, like at the ends of your phrases. Not uh, so much force. You need to ease out of the phrase, then start again. And that happens in lots of different places in the piece. So you're working on phrasing um, and shaping as well. So um, like I said, you can get the ebook from the link under the video. Um, and I'll be doing more updated videos for the book.